And finally, tonight, the big finish. People are cleaning up tonight after a deadly line of thunderstorms swept through six states yesterday. 22 people were killed. Almost 2 million households from North Carolina to New Jersey still don't have electricity. The heat is making the situation even worse. Crews are working extended shifts in the hot, muggy weather. Temperatures are about 10 degrees above average from the upper Midwest through the southeastern portion of the United States. The heat is still fueling eight separate fires in Colorado. The high today... 99 degrees. They're hoping for rain on Friday. These high temperatures, well, they are not normal. Look at this map. It was 109 degrees in Nashville this weekend. That's hotter than it's been since we started keeping records right after the Civil War. It's hot enough to buckle the road in Fargo, North Dakota. Temperatures have topped 100 degrees for several days in a row. The chief meteorologist at the NBC television station in Washington, D.C., says global warming is causing this heat wave. If we did not have global warming, we wouldn't see this. I, I really believe that. I really think that this is because maybe we would have seen 101. Maybe we would have seen 102, but not 104. We have set all-time records all across the entire portion of the country. Are we in an unusual pattern? Yes. Does this kind of pattern happen? Yes, it does. Is this an unusual pattern to see temperatures this high? When you're talking about all-time record heat, it is fairly unusual. Okay, he's a believer in global warming, although some conservative bloggers are calling him a nutcase and insist global warming is a myth. The discussion tonight with Bill Nye, executive director of the Planetary Society, the science guy. Dr. Nye, good to have you with us tonight. I appreciate your time. This is uh, fueling the conversation that we haven't uh, had a whole lot of in the media as of late. Who's right? Who's wrong? Your thoughts? Well, I strongly believe in climate change, not because uh, uh, it's my opinion or it's just it's the opinion of a lot of very professional people. And furthermore, it's very reasonable to me that the fires in Colorado, which is the dehydrating of the forest and the uh, the extreme temperatures across North America are consistent with all the models of climate change. In Washington, D.C. on Friday, there was a 30-degree Fahrenheit drop in temperature in less than a half hour. And this is evidence of extreme weather. This is a big storm. This is the storm that knocked out the power in the world's most influential city. And there's nothing to do about it. Uh, this is uh, bigger than we are. So this is a chance for us all to pull together and address climate change, to all get together and, and work to make our energy uh, distribution systems more efficient. What do you say to the critics? That, what do you say to the critics that this is just one of those <clears throat> years? That, that, you know, and why are people so hard to convince sometimes? Well, why they're hard to convince is always troubling to us in science education. But let's keep in mind just factually, the, of the last 17 years, 16 of those have been the hottest uh, of the last 17. 1996 is the one exception. There was a big El Nino. So the last 17 years have been the hottest of the last, <laughs> the last 16 years have been the hottest ever. And so this is consistent with, with models of climate change. The, the big hurricanes are consistent with models of climate change. The big storms, the dehydration of the forest in Colorado and the forest fires are consistent with models of climate change. Mm -hmm. Now, you can say since no one event is provable, that dismisses the whole thing, but that's not very good science. It's if, not you, very good. if you were in a position of power to actually do something, what would you do? What can we do? Well, I would, the old saying is that we would do everything all at once. This is to say we would make our electrical distribution grid much more efficient. You'll hear the expression smart grid. We would invest in research for better electrical storage systems. These would be batteries, uh, extraordinary uh, ways to store energy for later use as electricity, and we would invest in wind and solar power. Now, I'm open-minded to the idea of nuclear power, but right now it's so dangerous that uh, it's our, I don't think our technology is up to it. Instead, we'd invest in these more conventional energy sources, and this would be a national effort. And then we would lead the world in these new technologies, and people would embrace it in the United States. And I was born here. I'm a patriot and so on. The United States would be a world leader in this stuff rather than watching everybody else uh, not only yeah. uh, have better quality of life, but also have a better economy.
The people who are going to get rich are going to do it elsewhere instead of here. Bill, and and I thank you for your time tonight. A lot to talk about here, no question about it. Thank you for your time. I appreciate thank it. You.